Greetings and welcome back once again, everybody. I accidentally pressed the button, but it's about to be what it is. For those who just joined us, welcome. This is Amuna. If you're new, welcome. If you're coming back, welcome. And um, I pray everybody's doing well. Feel free to like the video, hit the notification button. Um, I just wanted to talk briefly about, and I did another soul ties video and it's coming the next soul ties video I just have to upload it but today I wanted to talk about something that is new to me which is the relationship advice side of YouTube and social media and I've spent so much time over the years looking into personal growth and development I thought that when you do it from that way, the next natural progression is to look at interpersonal relationships. But oftentimes people do it in the reverse. They look at their relationship to other people and after they get exhausted of um, things falling apart, they finally realize, you know what, I have to work on myself. I understand it. I get it, right? So in recent times, I've came across people that I may have saw in passing but really didn't take the time to look, like Derek Jackson, like... Um, a long time, long time, um, like um, R.C. Blake, I believe his name is, like um, a few of the people on YouTube and social media. So now this big, huge thing blows up. And like all of the scandals and the appetite for a scandal in the community, it is just... So let me rewind. The name of this conversation is The Fall of Man. There's something weird. I talked about it before about our need for uh, to idolize people, our need to elevate people beyond um, human status, to put them to this demigod type of status, only so that you can turn around and rip them down. Okay, this is this is a weird, strange obsession that feeds this. Oh my goodness, this shock and this outrage, and and I think it's a bit of a distraction. Because if I can focus on these people, if I can look at what's going on with them, then I don't have to look at myself. And as long as I don't have to look at myself, then I really don't have to do the work. All of these people, John Gray with his scandal, Kirk Franklin with his scandal, um, uh, the, what's his name, Derek Jackson with his scandal right now, it's m humankind, man being man. And we the people not able to, I'm not saying to live in a state of dissonance, but some of the expectations that people have of man is to say, and I understand the expectation, but as adults, to, there's a certain degree of we choose who we want to hold accountable and who we don't want to hold accountable. If you can understand what I'm saying. We choose if it fits us, if, the, if they're pandering to our shortcomings or our deficits or our desires or if they're telling us things that we want to hear. You're going to be blessed today. You know, there's a miracle coming for somebody. Leave that dude in front. If we're getting fed the way we want to be fed, like for instance, if it's junk food. Or if it has value and it's not necessarily junk food. And the reason why we're attracted to what they're saying is because it has value in our life. It's not enough for us to say it has value in our life. Now we have to um, take all that we're receiving from them and me and make make it to me that this person should be put on top of this pedestal. And then we connect, we tie that whatever truths they may be sharing with the person, like the messenger and the message. You know, when we don't do that, you don't know what kind of life the mailman is living. But when he comes with the stimmy, you know what I'm saying? You make sure that you separate what you're getting from what he may be about. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't hold people accountable, but some of these people who are in these positions are put there without any real level of accountability. We like, we press like, we subscribe. We share, we buy. There's no necessarily, you don't have to have a proof of concept a lot of times. You don't have to see how the person operates in day-to-day -day life. You just have to say, oh, I like what they're saying. That's interesting. Oh, I'm signing on. And as we do that, we elevate the person in the eyesight of everybody who's watching, who's paying attention. And then when they fall, because you have connected soul ties, 
you have connected your will and your emotions of their information with the life that they're living when they fall you fall you don't believe it anymore the thing is that truth is objective the the alcoholic on the street can share truth thanks for those who just joined us the the teacher who really doesn't believe what they're teaching could be sharing truth um the pastor could be standing up and have a a smidgen of truth and when they get off of that podium or that pulpit or that platform they live a whole nother life the question is whatever they delivered was it true or not if it's true, then make it applicable to your life. If it's not true, then discard it. The difference is whether or not you're going to follow that person. It's crazy to watch how, the, especially the melanated community, I see people reveling. I haven't followed the full life of these people because, you know. But I see people reveling in the fall of man. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a, even a part, in a, a, a proverb that says that do not rejoice when your enemy falls. If this person has fallen, this person has become ensnared by their words, their own words. Because the reality is their words may not match their deeds. And if their words were true, they're going to be ensnared by their own words and it's going to hold them accountable. So what are you following them for? Are you following them because it's cool? Are you for, hey, peace, welcome to the conversation. Thank you. Welcome back, everybody. I know it's been a long time because like I said, sometimes I go away because... I have to live and process the life that I'm talking about. And so the information comes slower. And I personally don't like to share um, that which I am not willing to be my own uh, guinea pig, so to say. Right? So the stuff that I share about souls, um, healing, uh, the journey is stuff that I've actually lived. What happens is that we can get information cerebrally. We can learn it, we can gather the data, we can synthesize it, and we can bring it to people, right? And it's in the cerebral. It's in our minds. We know how to articulate it. But actually doing it is something different. And there's some people that miss the mark when you translate what you're saying to what you're doing. A prime example is a recipe. You can go online right now and get any recipe that you want. But when you actually try to make that thing, you will see the pitfalls or you will see the little turks or the little tricks that you have to do to get it to come out in the way in which the author of the recipe said. That doesn't mean the recipe is wrong. So if these people, I'm not advocating for them because I don't listen to all of what they say. I'm just talking about in general about how people idolize and worship humanity. When each and every time, look, you're going to see humanity falls short and then people are going to say see this is the reason why i don't you know believe in the creator this is the reason so then the man had to be your god because if the man falls you fall i'm just talking about humanity in general we have to bethink ourselves because we are the ones we are the consumer the consumer is the one who determines whether or not this product is hot or whether you can have an excellent product but if you don't have marketing and it doesn't get to market no one can use it and therefore it doesn't have any market value. It can be an excellent product. This is why you see all these type of shows where people bring, try to bring the excellent product to market so that the people you made it for can benefit from what it is that you're selling. But you also have a lot of junk on the market as well. You know what I'm saying? You have something that works for something but doesn't work for the other thing. I say all that to say, whether it be Kirk Franklin cursing at his, his son, we're like, oh, he's singing praise and worship and he's cursing at his son. He seems like he got some issues that he needs to work through. Right? We saw the same thing with the other guy buying all the stuff for his wife. And then, you know, he's doing all of this crazy enough with his wife. And, and, it, and again, we saw it with Eddie Long. Now he's passed on. We see it and we see it and we see it. And every time we're like, like little children, like, oh, did you hear? And that person said, you know, sometimes we, we like I said before, we witness against ourselves. Sometimes it's the guilt within the individual that's condemning themselves and where it's called projection. It's called projection where you don't like what you see in somebody else because that thing is resident within you. So instead of, let's stick on the Jackson brother for a minute, instead of him coming forth and saying, yo, this is me right now. This is, and I think people would respect it more if the person said, hey, I was really speaking about myself. I caught wind of a video he did on narcissism and a video he may have well been speaking about himself, but it's something called projection. 
where you project it outward onto someone else because you can't deal with looking at it within yourself. And that goes back to soul improvement. That, then that goes back to where he's talking about now. You know what? I had to, um, I had to consider. Like a lot of the, I think it's, hold on. If there's nothing that we can draw from these situation, it's a waste of time. Because at the end of the day, these people, every time I have to sit on its own bottom, these people have to deal with the life that they created. Another thing I wanted to, to kind of briefly touch on is the madness about the people said they want to hear from the man's wife. He's given one man shall not rise against another, right? So they want to hear from the man's wife. The man's wife appears, but now she doesn't appear in the way that you want her to appear. People are never satisfied. First you said, where is she? I pray for her. She's being held captive. Now she appears. You don't like her bonnet. Why didn't she comb her hair? Why didn't, I mean, she could have take off the bonnet and thing. You know what I'm saying? She could have tidied up a little bit. But apparently whatever's going in her mind, in her space, she chose to appear in the bonnet. Now there's memes about the person. Aren't these the same people who said they cared so much? It's, isn't it confusing? Is it just me? Or is this just to show how toxic the community is and how much you feed off of death and destruction and and it's like why are we feeding off of this type of stuff how do we expect to be emotionally mentally sound if we're feeding off a demise if we're feeding off a downfall if we're not using things as cautionary tales you have the brothers like aha you see all this time you were talking about us and look you're dropping out of cm hall i could understand that knee-jerk reaction but that's stuff we do when we are not matured to the level where we can have discourse and it be meaningful how's this going to translate did you follow what he said did you follow his instruction did it ruin your life then you say i got a personal issue with this person i followed this person's instruction and they ruined my life i bought their book and i adhered to it and they and whatever 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 happened and then you take up that personal thing with that personal that person Right? It's just like somebody sells you a product and the product is off. You go back to the person. Now, there are things where it may have been a truth, but it may not work for you. Or you may not have applied it in the way that it could have been beneficial to you. Hold on, let me drink some water. But now, seeing, I just have to shake my head as I'm scrolling past some of this stuff. Hey, long time, long time. What's going on? As I'm scrolling past some of this stuff, I'm like, now they clowning the woman. You wanted her to leave and you wanted her to stay and you wanted her to get her nails done and you wanted her, I mean like, do you know what time it is, people? This is why sometimes I disappear too because it's like, it's 2021. Playtime is done. 2021 how are we still playing like we're on the schoolyard right and this stuff is still so very entertaining i know maybe sometimes i come in like oh she don't want to yeah i like my little you know reality tv 90 day fiance that's the one i watch because i it's crazy right but not to the degree where you're going to be all caught up behind all of these things that people are doing and not say, you know what? I may hold an ideology like for him. He was so um, consumed, Derek Jackson, in this thought process that he thunk up to himself, this ideology. He's entangled in it, that he has a blind spot, that he's not able to see himself. Right. And so you're going through. Because you have detached yourself, you've removed yourself from the information, and it's something for me to give other people. That's why sometimes it's good to pull back. Because if you get caught up in producing content, you're always looking like, oh, what is the person going to need? Or oh, what is this person going to need? Or oh, what I'm going to do a video about today? Or, oh, yeah. And so you're always all over the place, fraction, trying to do videos that people are going to be able to relate to until you go down the rabbit hole and not realizing that you lost yourself along the way. This is what also people who consume media need to understand that the pressure oftentimes, I'm not making any excuses for these people, but the pressure that is put on content creation is not a, the, the, the appetite 
for information. Like right now, you're watching this video, you're going to click it, you're going to watch another video, another video, another video. The person who's creating the video is like the person who's cooking. It may have took them three hours, five hours, eight hours to, pro to research and produce the content that you consume in five or ten minutes. Right? And so at the rate of consumption that this information is being consumed, the people cannot necessarily process that which they're sharing with you because they're trying to keep up with the algorithms. They're trying to keep up with your appetite. They're trying to keep up with the subscribers just so you can get a like or a hit or all of the stuff that people are looking for because way too many people have separated the actual, they have made this their life. So now when talking becomes your life, even when not, not that if it's say you're still a chat. And it says, in the abundance of words, sin is not far. So there's a principle to where you create a space where you always have to be talking because it is what pays your bills. I personally, that's why y'all be like, Amuna, where you at? I personally don't like to have to, if I'm not, if I'm not connected with the information, if I, and if I can't convey the information in a way, I don't like just talking, talking, talking for talking sake. Why? Because those words that I birthed into the earth are going to come back. And that's what happened to pastors. This is what happens to entertainers. This is what happens to social media personalities. Why? Because they have to keep feeding the appetite of the viewers and talk and talk and talk to them, talk foolishness. And every word that they spoke into the universe is swirling and waiting. And swirling and waiting when you write a book the time that it takes to write a book allows for you to think and I'm gonna come and read your comments so leave them in the box to think rethink and rethink again and then put on the book go away again send it to editor bring back the book and refine so when you're writing a book and when you're writing a, a article or when you're writing a pamphlet or whatever it is it's a process and that process allows you to birth words and refine these words so that when they're delivered they the, the intention behind them and the thought is much more than just running your mouth because when we run our mouth the abundance of the mouth the heart the mouth speak so you just all over the place and when the words come back to roost, if you go back and listen to these brothers' video, I just went back like three years. I went back like two years and listened to some of the stuff he said. I eat CM1. I'm sorry, I have to do part one, y'all. I eat CM1. Come back, come catch him. Nobody never set him up. Because he couldn't see himself, because he was too busy projecting, when he least expected it, because you didn't perfect within yourself that which you are expecting other people to have, boop, it catch you. Now, does that mean if you go to the doctor, you know how much time you go to a doctor and the doctor say, you shouldn't smoke and you shouldn't drink because it's not good for you. Now, how many healthcare professionals you know smoke and drink? So what happened? Oh, you know, say, because Dr. John smoke um, and, and he said, don't smoke, then I'm going to smoke. What? It's for you to decide whether or not you're going to smoke and drink. Don't smoke is a real thing. If you choose to smoke, what does it matter to you that the doctor's the one who said, oh, no, you know what, I don't believe in such, such no more. Because this is, we're looking for an excuse not to do, and we're looking for an excuse to do. People, oh, we see that in church, religious spaces. They say the people have failed them, and the people supposed to represent the creator to them, so therefore they don't believe in the creator anymore. Like, whoa, hold up. Isn't it man and the fall of man? So why don't we give unto man what is due unto man? Why are you blaming that on the creator? So people are over there like, because what the Jackson and his wife is doing is bringing in God a lot of it. And so people are like, well, leave God out of it. You know what I'm saying? And I could see how and why they're trying to bring in this, you know, uh, thought process of uh, God is in the midst of it. But to a certain degree, when people were doing what they were doing, it was man doing it. So man need to take a level of responsibility and accountability for what they're doing. All too often when we get catch, we say, why? You know what I mean? We want to blame on, on God or whatever the case may be. But let me see what the comment is saying. I'm not going to stay too long. It's just some of my thoughts. You know, say, hey, Jason. Oh, that's you. I couldn't even see because the, the screen is a little, uh, screen is a little, uh, 
there you go the screen is a little dark uh content creators who need to always talk because that's how they make their money yeah it's a bad thing and i realized that from a long time ago and sometimes y'all see me and something you don't i was doing slave left project you know what i mean because i realized that first of all it's draining a lot of content creators get burnt out they're trying to keep up with the news cycle and cannot if you don't take the time to process the information you could put false information out there in the universe a lot of people are just regurgitating just because they want to get a video up and it's bad news blues it makes a lot of junk circulate out there's people who are like yeah i saw that one of the original you missed the left project you know that thing's so heavy left project so heavy it's so heavy i had to put it down for a little bit it's heavy though um but it gave me so much insight on on life and how it is that we need to glean what it is that we can glean and apply what it is that we can apply so that we can make better strides you know what i mean if we continue to allow things to to remain in this foggy darkness like even in the left project right and we 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 don't want to go into the things we need to go into your family history um your own issues your trauma all of the things that you need to clean up we don't want to go into those things well we want the things that's going to titillate our senses the things that's going to tantalize us the things that makes us pick up the phone and be able to point at the other one and say oh did you see and it's like dude it's 2021 you know what i mean if you had children 20 years ago how old are they you know what I mean? You have children who are sucklings who are now teenagers. Time is progressing and still here we are as if we're in junior high school and high school. There had to be, I'll, I'll leave it at this, for Derek Jackson to have millions of followers and so much support, there had to be people who resonated with his message. And if he was being inauthentic, that also would have resonated with the people who were not being fully authentic within themselves. So his popularity and his reach in the community is just an indicator of the desires and the needs that the community has. Anytime we see something elevated, for instance, like a Cardi B, and a, all it, when we see certain things elevated and we see it doing numbers, and we that means that is the frequency that the people who are supporting them are on. Because if it wasn't, then it wouldn't be. If it wasn't, then it wouldn't be. So we have to do a litmus test on ourselves. Because somebody could sell us something, and if we ain't buying, we ain't buying. But if we're buying, then we are the cause. It's like, who makes things go viral? The people. The people make things go viral. And so if that's your appetite... And somebody's over here cooking healthy food and somebody's over here giving you junk food and junk food is selling but it makes you sick that's what you wanted <laughs> you know what i mean that's what that's what we wanted any questions or thoughts feel free to share and then i'm gonna roll on out that's my thoughts on the fall of man uh it has its place man is human we're going through this experience um he definitely had some things and some unresolved things within him and his mode of dealing with it was to try to help others to deal with their things before he was able to actually fix his own. And also it gave him, his work gave him access to feed an appetite that he had. You understand what I'm saying? His work gave him access to, to actually get the inroads to feed that very appetite, which is if somebody can know, okay, this is what the woman is going through, this is how I get in, then he knows that when I'm speaking to you, this is getting into places that I know is vulnerable and I know I'm going to have access to you in that way. So for the people who came forward, who, you know, people come forward when they want to, he, when the, when the, when the interviewer asks, well, how did you get access? And they tell you some of the women reached out because some women say, hey i want to hear what's going on women women also play into this but that's another question for another day you know what i'm saying sometimes our sisters sometimes we uh play into certain things and then at the end try to act as if we didn't see that far down the road and some of it we are contributing to 
the things and the positions. Not saying that people shouldn't take accountability for the things they do, but it takes two to tangle, basically. So with that said, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. That's my thoughts. Like I said, I have the soul. Um, my mind just the train is passing. What's the name of it? Y'all tell me what's the name of it. Soulmate. Uh how to get how, um, dealing with a stubborn soulmate I think that's the name of it if you haven't seen the other two videos they're up before these videos and um, this one talks about stubborn soul ties so not soulmate soul ties stubborn soul ties so for those who had a soul tie with Derek Jackson or a soul tie with John Gray because you listen to everything they say you fall asleep to their teachings you know it's settled in your heart soul tie with Kirk Franklin definitely he's singing music you jamming this is the way remember what we told you this is how soul ties are formed deep conversations emotional entanglement music so the disappointment that a lot of people are feeling is because they were in rap they were wrapped up with these individuals on a soul level and a feelings level right and now they feel betrayed in the same way in which the wife felt betrayed something to consider with that said everybody bless up like the video share the video all that lovely good stuff and when I have another thing to share I'll come back and share yeah all right then everybody bless now where's the exit button for the YouTube it's been a while y'all it's been a while since I went live on the YouTube all right Jason <laughs>